Um, so what is Provenance? Provenance is a project um, that was set up to really out of frustration for how little we know about our material world, where things are made, who made them, under what conditions. At the moment, um, it, finding out information about products is incredibly difficult, which makes making positive choices very difficult. Um, I'd say it's a, a mammoth problem, but Provenance is, is really here to help use technology in order to try and solve that problem. And so how does Ethereum fit into Provenance? So Provenance is concerned with how to make supply chains and product life cycles more transparent. And initially the Provenance project was using open data and kind of like a form of social networking in order to enable producers of products to make their supply chains more transparent in order to communicate that to consumers. But it was somewhat problematic because to make a supply chain transparent, you have to reveal where things are made. <laughs> That's the whole point. Um, but lots of larger producers don't necessarily want to do that because, well, you could say it compromises your competitive advantage to reveal what farm your carrots come from or exactly what mine your gold comes from or perhaps what factory you're using to make some intricate part of your phone. So we had this problem with provenance, which was that it was working very well for small companies that didn't have really complex supply chains and that were happy to reveal certain bits of information. It wasn't working for companies that wanted to remain kind of anonymous um, or keep some parts of their supply chain anonymous. So um, that's where Ethereum changed all of that, basically. <laughs> the blockchain has this affordance that is so perfect for that problem, which is that it allows you to transfer information in a secure way, in a trustworthy way, without having to reveal exactly where that information came from, which basically transforms supply chain transparency completely. So the blockchain is completely essential, actually. Um, we need the blockchain because we need to have a, a trust network. Like, that's super, super essential. We need to have a trust network so that we can carry information along supply chains without revealing uh, keys, without revealing who exactly people are in a supply chain in order to not compromise competitive advantage. And we'll need to ca carry lots of different types of information um, from verified certifications, perhaps, depending on um, a whole manner of things, but also information that perhaps isn't um, having a third party to agree it being correct, so more intangible types of information. And we need to a system that can allow us to do that in a trustworthy way, which is what the blockchain provides so beautifully. <laughs> a real-life example of using provenance um, in the world. So we've been looking at several different case studies and currently we don't um, want to focus on one particular type of supply chain. So we could go down a silo of just uh, food or just fashion or just electronics, but we've decided to keep it um, open. Recently, we've been looking a lot at garment supply chains. My background is in garment manufacturing engineering, so I looked at a lot of that, those supply chains in a lot of depth. So I've got quite a lot of knowledge about how data is transferred currently between different actors in that supply chain. So an example would be, um, so organic cotton. When you go to buy a t-shirt, often if something has got organic cotton, is important to you. Currently, uh, it's incredibly difficult to trace back whether the cotton in your t-shirt is actually organic or just came from organic producer that produces maybe 20% organic cotton, but the rest of it isn't organic. With provenance and with the blockchain, we're allowing that organic cotton to be certified on the chain and cascade down to the finished t-shirt through the person that spins the cotton, through the manufacturing of the t-shirt, down to the end consumer without having to reveal where or even who that cotton farm um, was owned by. But we can carry that certification down the chain and guarantee that that t-shirt is 100% um, organic cotton, whereas previously that wasn't possible. It could have been from an organic farm.
but not 100% that cotton being organic. OK, so we don't have to start right at the raw material, but I think it's quite interesting to start at the raw material. So um, essentially, all the raw materials leaving um, a certain producer would be um, entered onto the blockchain. And certain, some of those raw materials might have certain certifications associated with them. In fact, they might all have associ uh, certifications associated with them. So they might all have been certified organic or pesticide free or the labour um, authority might have said that everyone in this factory is paid fairly. Um, but the moment you transfer that cotton, that information is is not um, is only carried by sort of word of mouth. It's only carried on a piece of paper. That sort of certification body that made that decision about the cotton, unfortunately, it, it doesn't cascade in any kind of ro robust way at the moment down the supply chain. You just sort of take everyone's word for it. <laughs> Whereas with the blockchain, it allows you to actually carry that piece of information as a smart contract and transfer it along the chain all the way to the end user so that you can have complete, you feel safe that that that, um, that cotton came from uh, the, the lo it came from the conditions that were certified to it. So it's going to form more like a network because um, obviously transformation is happening to materials along a supply chain. So a, a t-shirt might be made up of cotton from several different sources, if you see what I mean. So the idea would be, yeah, exactly. The, the, um, what's the, sorry, what's the best way to describe this? I guess, yeah, I mean, the, the idea is that a contract carries along the train, but people can add to that contract. Yeah, that makes sense, because you've got um, a large amount of raw material going into a small number of items. Sometimes it's one-to-one, -one, like a diamond mine turning into a diamond on a ring, but most of the time it's many to... It's, it's lots and lots of raw material, and then you're taking it all the way down to the verification of that one item that it came from this array of sources, if that makes sense. So yeah, the idea is the contract cascades down the chain and different things can be add, added to it, new contracts can be made. Um, people might want to create contracts of their own, I guess. So when you receive your diamond ring, you might want to um, sell it on eBay after your you're, uh, I don't know, you decide you don't want it anymore. Um, in which case you could transfer the, uh, the provenance of that ring to the person that bought it from you on eBay, as well as the ring itself, which gives it its full chain of custody, um, could be um, transferred with the ring, if that makes sense. I mean, maybe like a diamond mine is kind of a better example, because it's very simple. It's like you mine a diamond, that diamond exists. Maybe it was mined by slaves. Maybe it was mined not by slaves. At the moment, to be 100% sure that a diamond wasn't mined by a slave is impossible. So with the blockchain, that changes because, well, uh, sorry, that's not true. Unless you actually mined it yourself and then made the rig and then owned it. Well, I think the blockchain... Hmm. So how... How can someone be 100% sure their diamond wasn't mined by a slave thanks to the blockchain and provenance? Well, I think, um, I think provenance currently, and what we're building currently, is still very reliant on third-party certification and audit. It's, it's not taking that out of the equation currently because there still needs to be someone to visit the mine and to verify that everyone there was paid fairly currently, in the current model. However, that, um, that certification that that mine gets is very easy to fake currently. It's very easy to throw a JPEG on your website and say, yeah, this mine is good, um, when actually, really, you've only got one mine out of 20 that's good. It's a bit hazy at the moment. It's a bit grey. Whereas um, with the blockchain, it allows you to really trace back the chain of custody of that diamond back to the certification that was issued to that specific diamond, rather than just generally the company, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's never really previously been possible um, without revealing every single actor in the chain, which 
particularly in the jewellery industry, would be problematic because it would cut out half of the supply chain. So it would be very difficult to get people to sign up to transparency. But with this method, it wouldn't cut out all of those middlemen that the diamond changes hands through. All they would need to do is allow the, the certification to travel with the diamond, which makes a lot of sense because it is the premium that the diamond holds, uh, is the fact that it's ethical. Our current thinking at the moment is that um, keys to write on the chain will lie with all of the actors in a supply chain. How fragmented that is um, will be decided over time. I mean, you could say in theory that every single person that works in a company in a supply chain could have a key and could commit data to uh, a product's um, provenance. But I currently we're just working on the premise that it's, it'll just be one key per actor inside a supply chain. So the mine will have a key, the jeweler that sets the stone in the ring will have a key, and the um, retailer will have a key, and the final owner of the ring will have a key. And if the final owner of the ring wants to sell on that ring to someone else, they will also need a key so that they can access the provenance of that ring. So that's the thinking at the moment. Um, so it operates very much like a wallet, I guess, like a Bitcoin wallet, except it's your material collection wallet, and it contains a lot more metadata about the materials. Hmm. So success in six years from now with the blockchain, I think is a little bit different to success in six years from now with Bitcoin. I mean, I think the blockchain is the interesting part about all of this. I think most people do. Um, I think success would be, um, I don't know, I, I, I think the blockchain is a really powerful step change technology that's going to allow us to create systems that, and solve problems I think we sort of dreamed that we could solve before. Um, I just hope it is used for that. I hope it's open, I hope it's public, I hope it's used to solve social problems, which is like a perfect application for it. I hope it's not private and getting more very individual people rich. <laughs> um, that's, that's what I would think would be success for it.